Hi, I'm Taylor Woolwine. Welcome to the Drawing Database. Today we're going to be using uh, the pencil and the skewer stick um, as measuring tools, working from the still life, um, checking proportion and uh, measurement. Um, so let's jump right into it. All right, hey guys. Uh, we're taking a look at this still life setup here. I'm going to talk to you about uh, sighting and measuring with this. Um, so when it comes to sighting and measuring, I think of this as a little bit of a a um, little bit of a fallback back plan for you, um, just so you're not doing the guess and check method of drawing. Um, and we'll talk about that further as I begin here. Um, so I'm going to be looking at the still life objects, mostly the tabletop, maybe that stool to the right of the table. So um, those upper level still life objects that you see in the distance. Um, when I get started, I like to give myself a few measuring points. So I'm going to try to figure out where I want this table to be setting in space. Um, I'm a big fan of this measuring point idea. I'm not actually drawing anything yet. I'm guesstimating I want this tabletop to be about yay wide. I'm going to say my stool might be somewhere down here in the distance. Just some uh, blocking here to start out with. Uh, before I do any measuring, this is my own personal preference. I like to do a little bit of a light gesture to sketch in the approximation of where my table sits in space. All right, so this is a little bit more intuitive, maybe a little, little check for myself, but right now I'm just using my eyes here, um, drawing in the bare bones structure of a few object relationships. All right, nothing is precise yet. Again, going off of my best guess here. So I'm looking at tabletop, uh, brown cardboard, Tupperware box. You can see I'm already starting to edit a little bit, thinking I need to blow up my object a little bigger. But again, I'm just looking at visual cues here, just checking one object against another and getting a little bit of an idea of where these objects sit for right now. All right, so I know this is pretty quick and dirty here, and that's the way I actually would uh, prefer to start on a drawing. I like to start very loose like this, nothing's clean. Um, with the idea that I'm going to make several passes on top of this. Uh, so I've at least hashed out what I think to be a good approximation of my tabletop, two boxes and an orange, um, roughly. Uh, so I've got that locked in. I'm going to at least think about where I think my stool might be sitting in space comparatively. I'm going to lock that in down here and then I'll get to that in a minute because this is the, uh, this is the main um, idea today is we're going to actually start to look at a couple measurement ideas. So this is my beginning kind of little bit of a quick quick sketch. Uh, I've locked some things in for myself. But this is where uh, my first drawing class I ever took, this was like mind opening for me, um, eye opening, uh, to think that there's a way to kind of check yourself and actually start to measure one object against another um, so that you're not doing that guess and check method. What I started with was a lot of I'm going to draw an object, it looks a little bit too small, now I need to erase it and draw it again and kind of repeated the process continually. Uh, and sometimes it feels like you're just butting your head up against the wall, um, uh, like there's no end to that kind of a method. So what we're actually starting to uh, use is some sort of a measuring tool. Now you could use your pencil, if your pencil's longer and not starting to get kind of dead on you. Um, but you can also use something like a skewer stick works really well. Um, this is nice because if you start to measure a longer object like this tabletop, this is actually long enough that I can start to sight this table. Yeah, so um, the first thing I'm doing is what I have got is I've got my measuring stick here. Um, I have got the left end of this measuring stick butted up against the left side of this tabletop in space. I've got my thumb locked into the right edge of that tabletop. So what's cool about that is now I have the width of that table locked into a measuring stick. Now what's really important is that I've got my arm extended and my elbow locked. So whenever I take a measurement, I want to make sure my arm's always extended out as far as possible. So right now I have tabletop locked in here. So that means if I twisted this vertically, I could start to compare and say, you know what, let me look at how tall, if I now move my thumb to the base of that table, I can see that the width of that table is much taller than the top of say that green bottle up at the top. So I can start to build one relationship against another. So where this can become really handy is, let's say I'm gonna do the same thing and check my brown cardboard box. I'm locking the left end of my measuring tool right to the left side of that box. I'm gonna lock my thumb into the right side. Now I can say how big is that left cardboard box compared to the Tupperware? And what I'm finding is that Tupperware box is a little bit bigger 
than the cardboard box. And in my mind, I was calling those the same size-ish. So that's a really nice comparison to make. Now the tough part, and this always confuses students when they start out, I'm not gonna now take that measurement and say, okay, this is my cardboard box, let me compare it to my paper, because obviously this is much bigger on my paper. Uh, what I'm doing is I now have a relationship. I can say I could fit one and like a little sliver, one and an eighth of these boxes into this one. So when I go to start to check out my drawing, if my cardboard box is yay wide and my Tupperware is this wide, I can start to look and see what this relationship looks like. So I'm gonna do the same thing on my drawing, lining up the left end of my measuring tool against the left side, marking my thumb on the right side, and now I'm gonna compare, and hey, I'm pretty close. That actually shows a very close relationship to how I was looking at it in real life, which is awesome. That means that my eyes weren't deceiving me too badly. Um, now these relationships never stop. Like you can double check yourself in a million ways. So I'm gonna check and see the overall left to right edge of this brown box. I'm gonna check the height of it versus the width of it to see how close I was. So I'll start with the height. I'm going vertically with my measuring tool. I'm looking at the very top of the box to the bottom. I'm gonna flip that height over horizontally on its axis and I'm gonna compare height to width. So it looks like I could fit one and about half, almost half, let me check that. Yeah, I can almost fit one and a half heights into the overall width of this box. So, I've got my approximation of the height of this bad boy, and I'm gonna lock that down. I've got the height on my measuring stick here. I'm gonna flip it on the side. I can fit one, uh-oh. I can only fit like one and an eighth of those bad boys into the width. So that tells me I probably approximated that box a little too tall. What I'm gonna do, is drop that down a little bit. Because remember, I said I could fit about one and a half heights into the width. And this is where my brain is never quite, quite. it's not a computer exactly, right? So it's a little tough to figure out these things just using your eyeballs. So just by dropping that line down, you can see it's much closer to that original relationship. One height fits nicely one and a half times into the width. So what that's telling me is a little bit of a erasure here. All right, I've got a good idea for the outer boundaries of this box. So I at least know left to right, top to bottom, that box is pretty accurate. And now I can compare that to the Tupperware. Um, and we know that the width of this is really nice compared to the width of the Tupperware. Um, so those are the kind of measurements that are gonna make this feel so much more accurate. You might be asking yourself, uh, Taylor, why does it matter with these boxes if you're an eighth of an inch off or something like that? Um, that is a good question. Uh, so I think accuracy is a nice goal um, for sure in any drawing. But yeah, I'll, I'll uh, definitely agree with some people that maybe total and complete accuracy in a still life is not uh, the end all be all. But think about this, uh, when you get to portrait drawing, figure drawing, if you start to approximate a nose, an eighth of an inch too far to the left or to the right compared to an ear, that you're gonna get some weird Picasso type figures really fast, some cubist mashups of the face. So when you get to a more complex object, that's where um, these kind of relationships get really, really important. So to be able to do this on a cube, but then to extend it to a much more complex still life object and then to the human face, body, uh, that's where this becomes really, really helpful for you. Now, I was just pretty much approximating the top of this box. If I wanted to get really particular about it, I could do the same sort of measurements I've been doing. I could take the skinny sliver of the top of that box and lock it into my measuring tool, which is this big of a space, <laughs> uh, super tiny. And I could start to approximate, okay, how many of those tops fit into the bottom of that box? It's so small that it becomes hard to tell, but that thing is eight times smaller than the rest of the box. And one thing it's telling me is I could probably even extend this top of the box up higher because we're almost at eye level on this box top. So it's nice to double check yourself because you'll realize just how skinny of a sliver that top of that box is. And I think my brain was telling me one thing and my eyes are telling me another. So I'm gonna change that up just a little bit. Now you can see uh, I'm a pretty, pretty loose gestural type of a draftsman here in the beginning. And I'm gonna keep it that way. We can always clean those lines up later. I'm using a pretty light pencil. Um, I'm not worried about that kind of stuff at this point. I love to keep these kind of lines a little bit on the, the loose side, uh, just blocking in that shape. So what I've got now is a pretty decent approximation of that box in space. Um, so I know this is a lot, I'm throwing a lot out at you, but measuring is one thing. Um, 
What's really handy about these drawing tools too, so you'll notice sometimes I might be holding this pencil up to check myself. Um, so along with measurements where I'm checking across horizontally and vertically to check like the size and scale of something, um, I will also check uh, angles as well. So getting boxes right in space and especially from this perspective can be super tough. So one thing that's nice is to think about what kind of an angle is this? You could even compare it to a flat line, a horizontal line. How sharp is this angle? And so I can approximate this angle like this, thinking of it as the hand of a clock. So if this is three, uh, that is not three, that would be nine o'clock. This might be somewhere at mm, 12, 10 o'clock, 1030, somewhere in there. So thinking of it like the hand of a clock, right? Um, that's a pretty steep angle up. I'm gonna look in real life and I can actually do the same thing with my pencil um, and, and check angles. Now, the only thing you have to be careful of is I'm not turning my pencil forward in space. That can get a little dicey because there's no way to really show, uh, to relate that to my drawing. What I'm trying to do is imagine that there's a piece of like plexiglass up in front of us that I'm smacking my pencil against, not unlike a sheet of paper. So if I'm imagining that that pencil hits that glass, I could spin it in 360 degrees, like the hand of a clock. So those are the kind of angles that I'm checking. I'm gonna line up that pencil with one eye closed the best I can to the corner of my box. And this is the dicey part, it's pretty tough, but you get better and better at doing this. Once I get that angle lined up, I'm gonna try without moving my pencil to convert it right over to my paper. It's not a perfect system for sure, but it's at least telling me I'm on track. That is not a bad approximation from how I'm seeing it. Could I be wrong? Absolutely, but it's a nice little check for yourself. Um, so the combination of measuring distances, lengths versus widths, um, one object against another is basically what I'm gonna be doing this whole time, and I'll try to walk you through it. Um, little tough, definitely the first couple times you try this out, uh, it's gonna feel unnatural for you. It feels like you're um, slowing yourself down a lot if you're used to kind of speeding through a drawing at this stage. Um, that's pretty normal. You kind of have to trust the process a little bit and hope that in the end, um, it's helping you with that accuracy. Um, all right, so I'm just gonna start to block out a few of these other shapes. Checking my angles as I go. This one's a tough one, super steep. All right. One thing I didn't mention too much of, but that I'm constantly doing is thinking about negative spaces between objects. Uh, so oftentimes uh, ignored, but that kind of skinny sliver of space between these two boxes, to me, feels like a pretty good approximation. Again, if you wanted to get a little more precise about it, you could actually check and see that space in my drawing is, I could fit like four of those skinny slivers at least into the face of this box, and you could check that. I mean, it gets a little tight when you're doing small measurements like that, but one, two, Looks like I could be a little on the small side, but it looks close, close in that same distance. Um, so I'm gonna call that pretty good. Um, but it's a nice way to check yourself, for sure. Um, remember that I had uh, seen that this Tupperware was a little taller than the box to the right. A really nice other um, method that you can use here while you're uh, building out your, your drawing is to continue a line straight over another object. So I just call these like construction lines, um, continue, continued lines. Um, but sometimes that can help me if I hold up a, a horizontal line right on top of that Tupperware box in real life, I can approximate where, how much space is above my, my brown cardboard box. And it feels pretty close to that, which is a good sign. If it was this much negative space between, there's probably an issue where this box is a little too tall. So those kind of lines can really help also to compare one object to another. So these are all just new tricks in the toolbox for you um, to help get these drawings a little bit more accurate, a little more precise. A biggie, uh, especially on this Tupperware box for me is gonna be the right edge versus the left edge. Um, how much of the right side I can see in space. Uh, let's see, one, I can, 
fit about one and three quarters of those right edges into the front of this box. If I check that, and this time I'm using my pencil just for speed's sake, one, I can fit one, and uh, it's pretty close. I might be able to see what it's telling me when I look in real life. I can almost fit two of these into this, which is telling me that maybe I see slightly less of that right blue edge of the Tupperware. So let me check here. One, one, two, somewhere right in the middle here is gonna be my sweet spot. So you can see where it's a little bit of a push and pull to get that right line. And I even like it in a drawing where you can see that visible kind of editing going on. You can see the multiple, the multiple chances or attempts to get the right, uh, the right measurement. Slightly checking my angles. All right, super, super tough view of the top of this box because we're very close to eye level here. It's a tall still life setup. And I can tell that because I can barely see any of the top of this box from my perspective. All right, this is a nice one to just double check the angles on using the kind of clock hand element to this measuring, but I think I'm in the ballpark here. All right, so you can see a lot goes into it if you really want precision in a drawing. I'm approximating this orange here based on the negative space around it, but you can definitely start to take a look at the size of that orange, maybe relate it to another object, uh, and check against the edge. Looks to be, in my drawing, about the same width as the blue edge of this box. I'm going to check in real life. Pretty darn close, little slimmer in real life, so that's telling me probably I need to shave off a tiny bit of that roundedness on that orange. So again, the relationships are never ending. You could do the same thing with the height of the orange. How many oranges could I fit before I reach the top of that box too? really good one and we haven't talked a lot about this because I've been uh, focusing on these first few objects but as I start to stack this green bottle on top um, you'll see how important it is to start to think about one object and how it relates to another in a vertical way so just like I started to pull this line across here to check how tall is this box versus this one um, it's going to be really important to see where does this green object sit on this box because I could put it anywhere um, if I hold up a vertical line, so I'm going to use my skewer stick here and just line it up right to the outside left edge of that bottle, it seems to be just outside of the corner of my box. So close to where I am, just telling me maybe I just nudge that widest point out a little wider. Um, in a similar way, I can see where it shanks through this part of the box. Um, I'm going to use some context clues. Seems to be just shy, just to the left of that corner of the box in real life. So I'm going to say, that bottle sits right around this area. All right, now definitely the height of that green object, the, the main body of the bottle, will be nice to double check uh, the height of versus the height of this um, uh, box. So let's see, I've got one height unit compared to, it's a little shorter than my box. Let's check in real life. Just looking at the body, the beefy part of that um, bottle, one height unit equals yeah, almost almost the same as this uh, this cardboard box so that's telling me I probably should ri raise that up just a tiny little bit All right. uh oh hunger pangs it's lunchtime Um, let's see, not a bad relationship. So now I know at least, in theory, I haven't checked this corner yet. I might need to check on that. It looks a little wide to me. But in theory, these objects are pretty darn close to how I want them to relate to one another, which is really nice. Um, jumping down, 
Cool. So I'm going to start to look at a few other aspects to this still life, um, just to show you a couple more of those big relationships. So we've kind of done a little small version here, um, all these objects, but you can see there's a lot to it just to get these accurate. But there's some other objects in this still life. So I'm going to start to very loosely block out what I'm talking about here. We've got a little bit of um, roll of paper sticking out here beyond our box. Definitely going to compare it to my green object. It looks to be a little bit shorter. I uh, got a PVC pipe coming up. All right. um, and then even like the fabric, the way it comes down is really nice to start to map in at this point. Uh, kind of building up from the foreground back. I'm uh, breaking all the rules here. All right. Now, one thing that's really important about these fabric folds is I'm trying to get the big uh, movement real fast in here, um, really early. Uh, this kind of a parabola shape, this U shape here, um, really important to not just approximate it. We don't want generic fabric, but we want it to be uh, feeling like it's coming down from some, some tacks in the wall, right? There's a lot of gravity pulling that down. Um, I'm looking at the low point, which appears to be right behind this green bottle. Um, if you can figure that out, everything else is going to work its way really nicely up there behind, behind the objects. Uh, and it feels pretty good. Just checking my angles a little bit. Not too bad. All right. Just thinking about those big relationships and how this curve relates to those couple extra objects I'm adding in. All right. So I'm going to add those objects. And I'm also going to try to look at these couple objects on the stool over to the right. Um, so this is a little bit tough because that bowling pin is really tall. Um, what I want to do is check the height of that bowling pin. And I'm going to check it against the width of my table because this is a long element. It is slightly shorter, about three quarters of the overall length of that table. Um, that's a nice little measurement check for you. So one bowling pin should fit right about here, um, roughly. So that's a nice little visual element for us to kind of start to think about placing where the stool would be and where that bowling pin sits in space. Um, and using your measuring tool like this can be really helpful just to show you where that might sit. Uh, another thing I'm going to do is check the height of that bowling pin against a couple other things. A little bit taller than our Tupperware uh, box over here. So that's a really nice way to start to triangulate a little bit, pinpoint where that bowling pin might sit, the height of it in space. I've got this little measuring point over here where I remember about the height of that bad boy. So that starts to tell me maybe, maybe I need to move that stool down just a little bit from where I originally approximated it. Now I'll double check myself, but it seems like height wise, that bowling pin might sit roughly in that space. So as you can see, kind of, this is a pretty analytical way to uh, start to run through a drawing. Um, but again, I think really helpful for that idea of accuracy. All right. Just going to check one more thing before I lock down my stool position. Nice. Um, just checking one more distance. So when I checked in real life, it seemed like one Tupperware height seemed to be about how low that stool is in space. And if I take one Tupperware height, I'm pretty close to the bottom of that uh, bowling pin about where I need to be. So that's a good check for yourself, just so you can start to make sure that all of those angles are adding up from a couple different checks. If you only check one measurement, you could be wrong for sure. Um, measure twice, draw once, I guess. All right, so what I'm trying to do is build a stool right around where I know that bowling pin should sit. So you can see I'm just kind of lowering it in space a little bit. Nice check would be how wide that stool is compared to something else. So in my drawing, the width of that stool is slightly shorter than the bowling pin mark we had there. All right. So let me check in real life. Stool width is actually about the same as that bowling pin. So what that tells me is I'm going a little bit too conservative on that stool. And really, I need to bring it out a little bit bigger. So you can see how you can't always trust your eyes when it comes to those kind of big measurements. Uh, especially the larger you start to draw, we're kind of starting to cover across this paper. 
a little harder to start to approximate these kind of distances. Okay. All right, so now we're getting somewhere. I've got bowling pin. I've got a better approximation of this stool top. All right. There we go. And remember, it's messy. It's, uh, we got some Giacometti style lines going on here, but uh, that is not a bad thing for the beginning of the drawing. Um, so that's just a, an interesting point that, man, that feels pretty big, but I think that's the way we're really seeing it in real life. It's just uh, one of those things where your brain doesn't want to see it that way. All right, I'm gonna think about this bowling pin in space. Gonna build it out really simply. Uh, something to think about for sure with this object because it's a kind of a weird, complicated object is thinking about building a, an axis line through it. Definitely I'm gonna see how tall on that bowling pin the skinniest point is right here. So on mine it appears to be maybe about two thirds to three quarters of the way up that bowling pin. I'm gonna check that in real life. One, I'm getting that top section one. Appears to be maybe more like in the two thirds range. So I might be a little high on that bad boy. Pretty close, not too bad. Um, so those are nice things to check for sure as you're moving around and you can see if you get really into this measuring idea, you can keep checking uh, for days um, to really get those measurements pretty accurate. All right. Might need to flush that out a little bit wider just from a gut, gut feeling. Um, Again, big fan of the measuring points, just to kind of give myself that idea. I can see there's kind of an odd tangency where that uh, jar sits right up against the bowling pin. A nice check for myself when I'm laying this jar in is to hold up a horizontal line across the top of it. That top of the jar lid is right above this line, actually, which is wild. I am approximating low again, so uh, I'm gonna look for that jar, which is pretty beefy to be sitting up uh, somewhere in this zone on the stool. Uh, so it sits pretty far over on the stool. I might cheat my stool out a little wider. But I'm starting to feel like maybe that bowling pin smushed in a little bit too far to the right. Um, I may need to even move that bowling pin out to the left. But we'll see. This is why I keep things nice and loose. Lots of comparisons to make here. All right, we'll say about this zone is pretty good as an approximation. Check myself in a minute here. Just gonna see what other objects I might be able to measure against. The top of that, the height of the jar against the Tupperware a little bit bigger, and it seems like in my drawing that's what's happening, so that's a pretty good sign. So that means that this is at least starting to jive pretty well with this over here. If I continue this line, you can see it pretty much continues with the top of the table, which is not a bad thing. That's how I was measuring it in real life. Um, we're getting close here. For the sake of time, I might leave that bowling pin as is before too long. Yeah, so I'm probably sitting back um, seven to 10 feet from this table too. Um, so fairly close up to this, uh, this guy. Um, also being the height that I'm at, uh, sitting down in a chair with these objects being up taller um, is also why we're looking at this really skewed perspective here. Um, all right. uh, one thing I'll definitely have to work on is shifting this over just a little bit. So this is where uh, you can tweak reality the tiniest bit to work for your drawing. But I think what I'd probably have to do, like I mentioned, was move that bowling pin over just a hair. So what's nice about keeping that drawing kind of loose in the beginning here, is I can do a little bit of a double vision kind of a thing. I'm just gonna use what I've already got and bend that bowling pin to work for me in space. You know that's a little bit crazy, a little bit hurts your mind, but I think that's a closer approximation to how that bowling pin sits in space compared to um, compared to my jar. So I'm going to call that a little bit of a better placement for myself than what I had originally. 
All right, I'll have to tweak that shape in a minute. Um, so like I mentioned before, I could keep going on for quite a while and the way I work, generally I would, um, keep playing with some of these relationships because we've really just gotten through the beginning uh, of laying out the big stuff, right? Now one thing that's really important, hopefully uh, this has come across, is that I'm thinking about really the bigger things. So uh, thinking about breaking a shape down into more simple, or I'm sorry, smaller shapes, like say the folds on this paper on our um, cardboard, or I guess it's not cardboard, it's paper. Um, cardboard colored paper. Uh, but breaking down those folds, thinking about things like text or images on a box, even the bands on this jar, to me should always be secondary, uh, when, especially when you're doing this measuring in the early buildup of the drawing. Big first, small relationship second. So once you get the big structure accurate, that little stuff is just, it's the detail, it's the icing on the cake. Um, so just keep that in mind as you're building out your uh, your measurements and wh what you're going to measure against another thing, always think bigger first, big relationships, then we can scale down to that small stuff. Um, so just for clarity on the drawing, I'm going to come through, touch up my lines a little bit, maybe talk about a few um, small areas that might be problems down the road. Check and see. Definitely there's, there's some very subtle stuff that would be good to look at, um, such as angles of, of this box. Feels a little sharp to me, given that skewed perspective we're at. I bet there's a little work I'm, that may be done, just shoring up some of these lines a little bit in the end. To me, a more accurate angle might be a little flatter, given the, the uh, vantage point we're sitting at. Um, we're talking about this in my drawing class right now, uh, or we've been. Um, so I'm coming back and hitting these objects with a little bit of extra heaviness on the line. So this is, this is uh, pretty important to think about it, at this stage. This is more of a, less of a making the drawing pretty idea for me and more of a clarifying uh, moment. Um, well, at least it's, it's a little bit of both. But for one thing, these objects are starting to pop out a little more crisp and a little bit less hazy as far as like, man, some of those, those beginning construction lines, they really fade back once you start to pop out a couple of these lines a little bit more decisively. So I'm just going from, started with a 2H and now I'm on an HB pencil. Um, so there's a big range between those in all directions that we could, we could be playing with value-wise. But uh, just for the sake of clarity, I wanna darken these lines um, so that my viewer doesn't get totally destabilized by this kind of stuff. And even this, I like to include some of this that early stuff, sometimes along with my darker lines, uh, just to show that I've been working. I've been, uh, you know, building through um, all of that measurement. But uh, there is a logic for sure about the weight of the line. So I definitely like to play around um, with maybe lines might be a little bit bolder, a little bit heavier toward the bottom of an object. It almost feels like there could be a light source coming from above, like there is, uh, hitting that object and creating a little bit of a cast shadow core shadow through here. Um, so playing around with that line weight, uh, lighter on top, darker on bottom is not a bad, a bad thing. Um, also, as an object comes out toward you, maybe hitting that line a little darker as it jumps out in space so it actually feels like it recedes a little bit, um, getting some atmospheric perspective ideas in there. I think I want to shore up that angle just a touch. So this is where you can refine. Like nothing, the nice thing about the way I've been drawing in theory is that nothing is too permanent from the beginning because it is so light. Um, so that even in this stage, like I did with my bowling pin, I could um, definitely rearrange slightly or even uh, a little more uh, dramatically, I could rearrange some of the positions of these things. So keeping yourself open, knowing that there's probably a good chance that things are not going to be um, uh, guesstimated perfectly right from the jump. All right, so uh, for this drawing, for, for time's sake, um, getting close to where I would call this guy probably finished. So the thing I would start to look at is probably um, 
checking into. I've got the big shape relationships. Obviously, I could do some more uh, line weight over here, and I might play just a little bit with that. But uh, I would probably just want to take a look at uh, filling the composition in, um, maybe finishing off this cloth that comes down toward the bottom. All right. Thinking about uh, those folds. Obviously, we can come down and check our angles with our uh, clock hand tool aspect of the pencil. Um, but uh, getting close here um, to the end, so uh, just to conclude a little bit, um, think about using either the pencil as your uh, measuring tool. Um, definitely having a skewer stick. Um, but thinking about using these tools that you have not only for uh, you know making a mark on the paper, but definitely for actually checking uh, your measurements in reality against those relationships on the page. Um, remembering this is super important that you're not just taking a measurement from reality and jumping down to the paper. That is, you could do that, but that's not what we're doing here. We're looking at um, one object uh, against itself and one object against another, um, playing with those big size relationships. Um, and just remembering that the bigger you start with, thinking about the big players in the composition, uh, and then whittling your way down to the detail, then toward the end really playing with this idea of making a drawing a little bit more pretty um, is the way to go just from a, uh, from a time standpoint, an efficiency standpoint as you build the drawing. Um, so see what you can do uh, working with those tools and measuring and hopefully have fun with it.